Okay, so the uh, micrometer uh, lab you, you're going to do, it's a measurement lab actually, but you're going to do micrometer vernier and you're also going to do a hardness measurement. So uh, this is part of what you need to know as far as uh, using micrometers. Okay, so um, this was done by Mark Zyden at at UW Platteville, he's really good at PowerPoint, and maybe he already had this once before. So, um, but please uh, review it. There we go. So, what are we supposed to do? Identify the parts of the micrometer, determine the micrometer reading, and here is what a micrometer looks like. So, essentially, what's going on here is we have um, moving parts, it's essentially a thread and by understanding what this th the um, kind of like how much it moves in each rotation, so the pitch of the thread, um, we can actually determine what the dimension of something is by using, there's a little slit here that you'll see shortly, um, but the terminology uh, this is called the thimble we have the sleeve, which is stationary. The thimble turns. The sleeve is stationary. We have an anvil, which is the stationary part on the measuring side. And then a spindle, which is the movable part on the measurement side. And then the frame. And the frame is usually made out of um, either cast iron or um, could be zinc or some sort of aluminum, something like that. Uh, and they're very accurate. So if you drop these on the floor, um, they become useless uh, almost immediately. So be very careful handling these. Um, Cost-wise, a one, zero to one inch micrometer is a good one. It's probably about $100. Um, and uh, cheap ones, maybe around 10 to $20, something like that. Okay, so um, he did a really good job at um, this, on the, these animations. So we're gonna look at closely at the sleeve and zoom in on that and okay so what we're seeing here is the thimble which is on the right hand side as we screw that in it starts to cover over some of these measurements so if the micrometer is all the way closed this edge here will line up with this zero here okay and um, funny thing is all of these micrometers pretty much measure only one inch uh, if you have a digital one, sometimes it's an inch and a half, but essentially it only has a small distance of travel, which is one inch, for each one. So you need a micrometer. If you want to measure something that's one and a half inches, you'll need a one to two inch micrometer. This is a zero to one inch micrometer, so it only has the one inch on there. They All the scales look the same on all of them. Okay, now when you're talking of, as a machinist, you have different terminology than if you are um, just a regular layperson that doesn't do machining. Okay, so, um, you know, one tenth of an inch, 0 0.100, um, we always talk in thousandths of an inch because typically the thousandths is kind of on the size of the tolerance that you're going to use. Let's say you might machine something plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. Now, a, south, a thousandth of an inch is 0 0.001. Okay, and so if you look at this dimension here, we wouldn't call that a tenth of an inch, we would call it 100 thousandths. And the reason why we wouldn't call it a tenth of an inch is because one division past the thousandths is the ten thousandths. So a machinist might say something like, yeah, that was plus two tenths. Now he's not talking, he or she's not talking about tenths of an inch, they're talking about ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so uh, we need to use microm the uh, language of machinist, which a tenth would be um, a ten thousandths. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so um, and then what's kind of funny here is that each hundred thousandths is divided up into four measurements, and those are all twenty-five thousandths. Well, why is that? Because one revolution of the thimble is twenty-five thousandths. So every time that thimble goes around once, it moves this one distance here, okay? Which is going to make measurement a little bit more tricky because you have to add by 20, 
0.25s. And remember, 25,000 says 0 0.025 instead of 0 0.250, okay? Um, 250,000 is a quarter inch if you know your decimals. Okay, and then the final thing is that um, a thousandth of an inch is one division on the diameter. So you're going to measure it according to this line, this horizontal line right here. Okay, so even though it sounds kind of confusing, we'll clarify in a second here. We're going to do an example. So what I'd like you to do here, we're going to zoom in on this. This is a zero to one inch micrometer. So the first thing you do, you always add the number of inches. Now, on this one, it's zero. But if it was a one to two inch micrometer, you would add one inch. Don't forget that because you'll be one inch off of the answer when you do the lab otherwise. Okay, um, the 15 is large on here. I don't know why. That's supposed to be the same size as these other ones. Somehow it, it uh, resized itself. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is to think about how you'd measure this. Okay, so um, we're measuring something, maybe the diameter of something or the width of something that we basically clamp this thing onto. Um, over at the side here, this black area or gray area is probably some sort of a friction clutch. So what that does is allows you to tighten onto the thing without using it as a C-clamp. If you ever just take and turn this as hard as you can, it'll bend this frame and you've just rendered this micrometer completely useless. Okay, so we get, these are 100,000, so we would write this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then we would have to measure how many, 25 thousandths, and then this here. So let's, let's look at how they do this here. Um, if you're good at micrometers, just do this on paper, but I will require you to do it this way on your lab, so pay attention here. So you take the smallest measurement and you write it down. If you do not show the math on the side, you will not get credit. I've said this hundreds of times, people don't listen, and then they get a lab that is worth zero points because they didn't follow directions. Okay, so um, the largest sleeve reading in this was gonna be 300,000, so we'd write that 0 .300, right? Okay, and then the next thing is, you can see that we're past the first 25 thousandths here, but we're not to the next one yet. So, because we're kind of somewhere in the middle, and so we're going to add 25 thousandths. So, we're going to say 0 0.025 there. Okay, then we're going to add how many thousandths over here? So, if this is 16, it'd be 0 0.016, right? So, let's look at that on the thimble 0 0.016, and then we add all this up and we. Get 341 thousandths of an inch. Okay, now you should be able to do this in your head, but all the time that you're going to be doing it for me, you're going to be um, showing the work like you see on the left-hand side. Um, that way I might be able to give you some partial credit uh, because um, I can't give you partial credit if uh, I don't see your work. You just copied someone's answer or something. Okay. Uh, this is really funny because it says this is a digital micrometer. Well, it's kind of an analog digital one. Um, but what's really cool about this one, it gives you digital, digital inches here and over here, it's metric, okay? So metric's a little bit different. Um, and in one revolution, it's, 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 it's kind of the same, except we're in millimeters. Um, and uh, I think that one revolution is a half a millimeter, I think is the deal. So, you know, very roughly, a little over, um, let me see here, uh, 0 0.025 millimeters is a thousandth of an inch. Okay, so 0 0.025 millimeters is a thousandth of an inch. Uh, okay, so 0 0.341 is the digital reading on that one. Okay, now. This is a three to four inch micrometer. It doesn't say that up front, but this is an actual problem that I want you to do. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in on this. And so I want you to pause now, and um, I want you to do this, write it out just like you, we did in the last one, and then come back when you have the answer. Okay, so the first thing you do is you, you can add 
the um, how many inches okay so if I click here I find out the smallest measurement is th three inches if I remember correctly yep there's three inches okay so then what do we have we have 400 425 400 okay so let's write that down first before I forget 0 0.400 okay and then one two three times 25 so 75.075 okay and here's where it's tricky if you look at this you can't tell whether or not in fact we should have even looked at this before we did the that, that 0.075 because we could actually be past the it'd be 500 thousandths you know and how do I know I'm be below the number 500 thousandths well you can't always see the line here sometimes you'll see it peeking out and sometimes it'll be covered up and the only way to really know is you have to look at the next measurement if I look like if I look over here and it's like 23 24 I know that I'm still on the 400 thousandths and I'm adding to the 75 but if I see like one or two thousandths over here I know that I'm at above 500 thousandths so I would actually I would have had to go on way back over here and said 500 and one thousandth or five hundred and two thousandths okay so that's the only way to really know whether you're when you're close to a reading whether you're after it or before it so pay close attention to that I will give you some exercises that deal with that okay so uh, we have twenty one thousand so we would write that point zero two one right and then we would add up <laughs> 496 so almost three and a half inches really close to it okay so what do we learn here you lightly tighten on the object now if it's round and I'm gonna do when I, once we're, we're done with this I'm gonna show you a little techniques because part of it is technique okay so lightly tighten on the object you got to make sure that the object you're actually clamping it or you know uh, tightening in the right spot okay so if you're doing something round we got to make sure that we're square in it in the highest spot so um, so we lightly tighten on the object using the friction clutch okay determine the smallest measurement when the micrometer is closed and that's the first thing you're going to add on that on that math that you're going to show me and then the first one is how many hundred thousandths and the next one is how many twenty five thousandths and then the last thing is how many one thousandths we add them all up and we get the answer okay so um, okay so we have here my micrometer set zero to one inch um, one to two and two to three okay this whole set something like three hundred dollars can't remember where I got it I think I got it off of uh, actually a student sold it to me after he had class with me uh, and uh, I also have these little things here which are cool and these are calibration blocks okay so with this thing here I can calibrate my two to three inch micrometer um, with this one other one here um, it's one inch long so I can do uh, my one to two inch micrometer otherwise the way I make sure that a micrometer is reading at zero is I take it and I turn it all the way to zero and I gotta make sure though one thing I like to do is I take my shirt and I pinch it in between it and then I pull it out and it, any any dust or crap that's on there uh, yeah, it's, is um, pulled off so I just did that so I'm gonna turn it to zero One's a little bit. Of, it's a little bit off. Let's, I think it's got some rust on it. I haven't been using it in a while. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty much lined up at zero. It's close. I can cal I can actually. I can move this sleeve a little bit. There's a wrench, and you can move the sleeve to calibrate it. So don't do that yourself. This little thing is a clamp. Okay, so when I clamp it, so I do a measurement, I can clamp it, 
If at any time this thing feels tight to turn, check the clamp. Otherwise, it could have been in the lab when we're getting rust, and this then it's hard to turn. Okay, so let me show you how to measure something. Um, I have a pen here, and I'm going to use this. And here's the hard part: you don't have enough hands. Okay, um, so what I do is I kind of hold. Let me see. I'm going to hold this thing, and you got to figure out a way that you can get it on there. Okay, now I'm also going to move the thing back and forth under that while I push the friction clutch. This thing has puts a little bit of force on it. I'm going to move it back and forth. It just grabs it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, oh, that is. Oh boy, yeah, these are getting bad. Uh, 375, um, 385, 389. So this is 389 thousandths is the diameter of that pen. Okay. Um, you, of course, are going to write that down on a piece of paper so that I know what, you're, what you were thinking when you did your work. Okay. Um, always do that, what I just did, where I went to zero. Or if you have a, uh, let's say, a two to three inch micrometer, you find a little calibration device, which is going to be around the lab. And this is kind of tricky to do, but you have to get this lined up, all three of these things lined up, and get them square. If they're not square, it won't read. So you'll have to do a little bit of wiggling on everything. And I can see that this thing is not exactly lined up, so I'm going to move it back. Okay, and then this one has a friction clutch on the back. That little thing right there. A little bit different on that one. Um, manufacturing this is Minatoyo. It's a Japanese brand. It's a good brand, and you can see that the zero lines up pretty good. Okay, so that's measuring using a micrometer. Now we can do round things, we can do square things whatever we need to do um, and um, yeah here's let's do another one here oh I can't do it with this one I can measure this wire it says five thousandths of an inch in diameter and so I would just clamp on it and with my zero to one inch micrometer I would just quickly clamp on that and I would have to get it between the anvil and the spindle easier said than done and then we'll look at it, and it is just under five thousandths, which I think, because this thing was a little bit off, is the reason. So that is how to use a micrometer. Okay, and um, you will be doing that in your lab. Um, there's another video that shows you what exactly you're going to be measuring in your lab. So I am going to sign out.